Story 1. Wife sent nude videos to her co-worker. Hey everyone. This is so hard for me to say as D-Day was just on Friday. But I really need to get this down and see what the road looks like going forward. I haven't been in this sub much so forgive me if I don't use the correct terms. We, M30 and F32, have been together for 7 years, married for 5 and we have 2 children together. Things have been up and down over the years but our lows haven't been marriage ending. Over the last few months, things have been very rocky. More arguing, disagreeing, and fights. Fights escalating to yelling and name calling and me packing my stuff and sleeping in my car. We haven't been on the same page for pretty much the whole year. I noticed a change in her behavior over the summer. She was spending more time away from home by taking smoke breaks that lasted for hours at times. She claimed she was listening to music, talking to family, and just getting away from the hectic part of our life with the children. I understood because I know that it can be overwhelming to deal with the family stress. But it became excessive. So much so that I felt so lonely because she was barely around. The tipping point was on Halloween when we took the children out trick for treating. She got a phone call that she was acting super sketchy about. She went away from us to answer it and her body language showed she was trying to hide who she was talking to and what they were talking about. I made a mental note of that and we finished our night. I woke up the following morning and went through her phone to make sure I wasn't just assuming anything. There was no record of her getting a call at the time we were out. Weird. I went to her pictures and saw she had a screenshot of her talking to an unsaved number and multiple instances of this. I went to her messages and nothing was there but the deleted screenshots show that she was messaging the guy. I called the number under the guise of being someone he knew and he told me everything. He said he knew her, worked at the same place, and would chill with her. I got into it with him once I revealed I was her husband but kept it short since my beef was really not with him, it was with her, so I came home and confronted her. I gave her a chance to tell me but she didn't. So I told her what I knew and showed her what I had on her. She then told me that when she would disappear for hours she would go see him at work and smoke, drink, and listen to music. She says they never got physical and she just enjoyed his company. It's hard for me to believe this because, during the conversation, she admitted to sending him nude videos in the shower, which I saw in her deleted videos. I called a divorce lawyer to hear my options and have a strategy session. I don't want a divorce, and want to reconcile. I'm just not sure what to expect and how to actually get past this. I feel like shit, self-worth in the trash, and confidence at an all-time low. She quit the job, blocked his number, has been remorseful, and also says she wants to keep our marriage. That went into my decision to stay as I can see that her character hasn't been this way the entire time. So maybe it was truly just a rough time. There's no excuse but I believe in second chances as I fucked up in the past in other relationships and was given a chance. What do you think Reddit? Am I wrong for not just leaving? What can I expect? Thank you to any and everyone who responds. Update 1. First and foremost I have read every single comment and have taken a moment to understand where everyone is coming from. I appreciate the advice more than you know. We have our first session for MC today and after that, I will know more of what I think will be best to do. I don't know for sure if this is going to work. She didn't admit to physically cheating even after being pressed about it constantly after these few days. But I'm 100% not convinced. Many of you have said this in the comments and it was what I thought as well. Plus I can't trust anything she says so I will just believe she went all the way. I mean, why wouldn't she if she took it as far as she did? I have another meeting with my lawyer this week as well and am seriously wanting to sign a postnuptial agreement if I even decide to stay. If not I'll just divorce and work on healing myself. I can't imagine how life will be knowing what I know. Also she's went with everything I've requested. Full phone transparency. Sharing location. I blocked and deleted his number. No social media. This is crazy because I'm not the guy that wants to play prison warden. My loving trusting marriage is over. So maybe divorce is best. As you can imagine my mind is fucked so I don't know if anything is the right choice. I'll update as I progress. Thank you all for your words and stories. It helps. Update 2. Hey everyone. A couple of days ago, I made a post about finding out my wife cheated on me and sent nudes to her coworker. I have been going crazy over the last few days and today I finally realized what I want. I want to get a divorce and focus on healing myself. I thought I could get through it but I can't. I just can't see my life being any better being with her. I can't see a future anymore. I can't ever trust her. I can't be enough for her. So, I'll just be alone. Thanks for your support guys. It's just a major deal breaker for me and I chose to stand by my decision. I served her the divorce papers today. She can go be happy. If anyone has advice on what to expect please share. Update 3, I value myself more. I gave her divorce papers. This marriage is over. I can't live my life constantly second guessing everything. I immediately quieted the mind demons. I feel free. Now, through the other difficult road of divorce. This story is a reminder of how crucial trust and honesty are in a relationship, and how easily they can be shattered. For OP, 
the emotional and mental burden became unbearable once he discovered the depth of his wife's deceit. When boundaries are broken, especially through something as intimate as sending explicit content, it's hard to look past it and feel safe again. The OP's decision to file for divorce highlights that sometimes, even with remorse and effort on the cheater's part, the damage is simply too much. His journey reflects a painful truth, no one deserves to be left questioning their self-worth or constantly playing prison warden in their own marriage. It's admirable that he chose to focus on his healing, acknowledging that it's better to be alone than to live with a partner who could betray his trust so easily. This story serves as a reminder that love isn't just about forgiving, it's also about respecting yourself enough to know when to walk away. Story 2, 27 years married, gone, it hasn't yet been a week since my husband admitted an 8 year long affair. He said it was on and off because he felt so guilty. They worked together, I'd met her several times. On some level, I knew but it was still a gut-wrenching shock. He feels terrible and is saying all the right things, that I was the last person to deserve this. He's sobbing and keeps apologizing but is sure that we will not be able to overcome this. He regrets causing the pain but he doesn't regret his AP. He has strong feelings for her. We have college-aged daughters, one here still, a senior in high school. I can't bear to break this news to them over a video call so we're waiting until everyone is home for Christmas. So we're pretending, although it's incredibly strained and depressing. He's been sleeping mostly downstairs for a while so our youngest hasn't really noticed anything different. This is honestly the worst thing I've ever experienced. I feel stupid for not realizing it. I'm angry, so angry, that he would let it go on so long. He's not seeing her now, I told him if he respected me at all he'd stop while I was still his wife, but as soon as we're legally over I'm sure he will, even though he said he has no plans. He stayed so the children would have a stable family. I would not care if something terrible happened to his AP, and I'm obsessed with looking her up on social media. I know it's not healthy. We're waiting on a therapy appointment to discuss the best way to handle telling our children. The problem is, we're still friends. I've known him for over 30 years and I still love him. Who do I text stupid things to now? I love his parents, his siblings, and their families. We have such a solid history I'm finding it hard to understand what I will be without him. He's really pathetic, moping, unable to eat. I've lost 9 pounds already myself. I'm getting my own lawyer to check over things but our joint lawyer will make this easy and amicable. My husband will give me whatever I want. He admits to the affair. He knows he was terribly wrong. My thoughts are scattered, I know this post is disjointed. I just want to know if I can do this by myself. I stayed home and raised our children, working only part time. I have a 26 year old degree but no career. He says I won't have to worry about money but I know nothing about investing. No 401k. I'm scared. I can't imagine myself with anyone else. I feel so lonely while he is AP waiting on him after this is over. I don't want our girls to hate him. I won't talk bad about him to them but I'll be damned if I make it easy for him to bring his AP around to make a new family. AP is my age, she's already divorced and has two kids of her own. I really, really hate her. And I'm furious with him but we need to have a working relationship for the children. I've set some boundaries though, I don't do anything for him anymore at home. I used to take care of him and now I'm 75% ignoring his presence. He understands and accepts anything I throw his way. I'm bitter and jealous but I'm not built to stay angry all the time. So we have sort of a truce. I want him to be okay eventually but then I don't want him to be happy without me. Please tell me it will get better. I'm practicing self-care and there are things I want to do, to discover who I am without him. But I don't want to be alone for the rest of my life. How in the world will I ever be able to trust anyone else? I don't want a new relationship, I can't imagine it at all. Going through the end of a long marriage like this must feel devastating, especially with the betrayal that cuts so deep. It's only natural to feel a mix of anger, sadness, and uncertainty about what lies ahead. My advice for you is, focus on self-care and finding support, whether that's through therapy, a support group, or leaning on friends and family who can offer strength during this time. Setting firm boundaries with him and resisting the urge to check up on the affair partner would help you regain your own peace of mind. Taking steps to secure your financial future would be empowering, too. Consulting with a financial advisor can make things feel more stable, providing confidence and independence. Reconnecting with hobbies, friends, and personal goals would be a step toward rediscovering who you are outside the marriage. Take it slow, knowing that while it may take time, trust in others, and in yourself, will return. Most importantly, remember that you're not alone and that there are people who genuinely care and want to support you through this. Story 3, 11 years ago she cheated on me and knocked herself up in the process. I just met the child who was never mine and it's crushed my soul. She couldn't keep other men's dicks out of her pants when we were together. I would have fought to keep her in my life forever, but the damn infidelity tanked the trust. The last time she cheated on me she didn't even come clean, just ghosted me and blocked me everywhere. It was 10 months later that I found out through the grapevine that she had been knocked up and delivered a real baby into the world, using one of the names we'd workshopped when still a couple. 
It's been a long and sad life for me since then. I only ever wanted to be a great dad, and I knew she was the kind of mother I wanted in my family. Yesterday, I was a vendor at a local maker event. I spent the whole day interacting with kids and their families, walking them through my craft and lighting the fires of imaginations. In the middle of this event, a 10 to 12 year old kid approached my table and we started talking shop. Super innocuous conversation, and soon after the kid walked away, returning to the background thrumming of nameless strangers. Three minutes later, I saw the kid again, with his mother. My ex. Holding a toddler in her arms. With her mom. What ensued was the most awkward exchange of words in my life so far, as the kid described to his mom slash my ex the kind of work I do, as she had to stand there and pretend she didn't fucking know everything about me already. I sat there as the child who isn't mine talked to the wife who isn't mine about my skill set and interests. I've been crying off and on all day. I have no one to turn to. No one gives a shit about the emotions of a mid-thirties straight man who already doesn't have any friends and who was traumatized so intensely by a woman more than a decade ago that, even now, her infidelity wounds me. I wish I had either never been born as a man, or that I had died already. This is the newest low. I'm sorry you're going through this. Running into your ex and seeing the life you once imagined but never got a chance to have, especially under these circumstances, must feel like having an old wound torn open. You've carried so much pain and betrayal, and it's completely valid to feel crushed, especially with such a raw reminder of what you lost. Permit yourself to grieve this all over again, but know that you're not alone in feeling devastated. You're allowed to be hurt, and some people would care deeply about what you're going through, whether that's a support group, a therapist, or even online communities where others have faced similar heartbreak. Taking steps to process and release this pain might be what helps you rebuild from here. You deserve peace and healing, and while it won't be quick or easy, you're worthy of a life that isn't weighed down by someone else's choices. Remember, there's a future where this pain won't define you. Going through the comments, user Wash Impressive 8158 has this to say. You may not see this, but this actually can be the event that allows you to move on. So she's someone who hurt you deeply. You haven't been in contact so she's been a mystery looming for a decade. You survived this situation, actually damn well. So now it's time to square your shoulders and start living the life you deserve. Don't go with your instincts at this point. They've been keeping you in pain. Time to follow advice, to the T. My kids and I were left by my wife when they were young. I raised them solo and they ended up fine. The one thing that helped with the pain was a damn book. No more Mr. Nice Guy. It's a quick read but it changed everything. Just follow the instructions. Make the move. You survived the worst. Now go for it. Story 4. Found some photos on backup drive. My wife and I share a hard drive where our family photos are backed up. A few weeks ago I mistakenly deleted a travel photo I had taken a while ago and wanted to retrieve it from backup. I successfully did this and stepped on a possible landmine. I found 20 plus or so selfie photos on the drive that were taken by my wife at one time in the mirror of our bathroom. The photos were taken by her, one single evening during a week in the summer when she was traveling. We have a second place where she was staying. The photos were full frontal shots of her bottom half nude and top half covered. They were all taken late at night. Basically the same shot but with some differences. A few more things. She has always been groomed down below but shaved a lot more during this time. I noticed when she returned from the trip and casually asked her why she had done this and she said it was to fit an unworn swimsuit. But she took no photos in the swimsuit and I am reasonably sure she did not have the swimsuit with her. I also don't believe she would need to regroom herself to wear it. Another thing. She often takes selfie shots fully clothed and trying new clothes on in stores. But they are singles and she is more neutral in expression and pose. Here she took multiple shots as if she was composing the shot. Head in slightly different positions each time. A neutral expression on face, maybe a very slight smile but I may be overthinking this. Some with her looking at the phone rather than the mirror and some looking at the mirror. This happened one time in the summer and only one time. And then a few days later she took three to four far more posed selfie shots, much less, of her in underwear. This time smiling when looking at her phone. And everything was deleted from the main library. I found all on the backup accidentally. And nothing more has been taken. Last week we both traveled and she returned a few days after me. She was now shaved more so was now completely groomed. I again asked her why she did this as she didn't mention it until I asked her. She was embarrassed, said it was a mistake but that all of her girlfriends had been discussing this during a recent dinner she had had with them. But no mention of the swimsuit issue for the first time. I looked by, and found no photos of her this time on the backup drive. Final thing. I casually asked her where she had done both and she said our home city. But I know this was not true the first time as I had been with her in another city before she traveled there. Why lie about the location? The second time I'm also doubtful it was done in the home city but I don't know for sure. Question, PLS to women on this thread, is this something married women do? 
I understand why she might take a single shot and then delete it. But why take 20 plus, posing to compose them and then delete all? Is she sending them to someone? Yes I checked but was I too late as the photos were taken in the summer so nothing was there on the standard social media threads she uses. No more photos have been taken. Nothing of her being completely groomed. She said she didn't like this look so maybe that is why. And no she doesn't have a burner phone, and no I haven't found any suspicious conversations with anyone. I have not revealed I have seen the photos but have retained the evidence and am wondering what to do about this. 45M, 40F, married for 10 years. I'm sorry you're going through this, it sounds confusing and painful to find these photos without any clear explanation. It's normal to feel a mix of concern and uncertainty here, especially with the unusual grooming patterns, the number and nature of the photos, and the inconsistent explanations you've received. Since you haven't seen any additional signs or suspicious behavior, it may be worth considering a direct but gentle conversation with her. You could bring it up without accusation, letting her know you found the photos while restoring one of yours and see if she's open to explaining why she took them. It could be that there's a reasonable or personal reason behind it that hasn't been shared yet. Trust can take a hit when things seem secretive, but open dialogue might clarify things and help you both feel more at ease. Approaching this from a place of curiosity rather than suspicion might encourage her to share more openly if there's a simple answer, or if there are issues in the relationship, it could help set the stage for working through them together. Remember, finding out more directly can help prevent resentment from building up and help you feel more at peace. Story 5. My, 35M, wife, 32F, cheated on me two years ago and I forgave her after she signed a post-nup. But now I've found out she didn't give me the full story and am strongly considering divorce again with the benefit of the prenup. How can I learn to trust her again? My wife, Ella, 32, and I, 35, have been together for seven years, married for five. Two years ago, she admitted to cheating on me with a coworker. I had always believed that cheating was a red line for me, and I was initially determined to divorce her. However, she did the work to regain my trust, or so I believed at the time. I also factored in the following, which allowed me to eventually move past it and forgive her. 1. She confessed to me voluntarily, she wasn't found out and forced to tell me. 2. It was one time at a housewarming party with the coworker. I remember that night, she didn't return home until 4 am, and I sent her several texts checking in to see if she was okay and if she needed me to pick her up, she normally doesn't like to drink but occasionally succumbs to peer pressure, so I was worried she might have been too drunk to drive. 3. She quit her job after confessing to me. This was her own choice to prove that she was prepared to hold herself to better boundaries, I actually discouraged her at the time because I was set on divorcing her and was concerned that her lack of a job would mean I would need to pay higher alimony if she was unemployed. 4. When I was 19 years old, I also cheated on my then girlfriend, not Ella, via a drunken kiss. Obviously, it wasn't as bad as what Ella did, which was full-on intercourse, but part of me felt like a hypocrite for not being able to forgive Ella, because my college girlfriend had forgiven me. Given the above, and the fact that Ella genuinely seemed remorseful, everything else in our relationship was great, and she was the most compatible person I had ever dated personality-wise, I decided to forgive Ella and not divorce her on the condition that she signed a post-nup. She enthusiastically agreed. The post-nup isn't overly harsh, in my opinion, aside from affirming that our premarital assets won't go into the settlement in the event of a divorce, it also included an infidelity clause with the penalty of the cheater forfeiting our jointly owned home, the car, and alimony in the event of a divorce. The balance would also be split 60-40 in favor of the cheated spouse rather than 50-50. We both had independent legal advice when this was drafted and signed. Fast forward to last month when I was contacted on Facebook by Alice, the wife of my wife's affair partner. She had tracked me down by going through Ella's social media. She told me that she had caught her husband, Bill, cheating on her and discovered their affair from two years ago after going through his electronic devices. She asked if I knew, to which I replied that I did, but I thanked her for telling me anyway. She asked what had happened between Ella and me, and I told her that we had reconciled. She said she was determined to divorce Bill because, unlike my wife, Bill had proven to be a serial cheater and never confessed to her. The part that has since changed my mind about forgiving Ella is the fact that she revealed that Bill and Ella had actually been having an affair for five months. I clarified if she meant an emotional affair, but she clarified that it was a physical affair and that they had hooked up over 10 times. In my mind, this makes the affair so much worse. It wasn't just a drunken night, it was a long period of planned and deliberate choices, and I feel like an absolute fool. This past weekend, I confronted Ella, and she admitted it. I asked why she didn't tell me the full truth, and she said she didn't believe I would have forgiven her if I had known. She's been trying to convince me that it's in the past, we've made two years of progress since, and it doesn't matter whether it was once or ten times. She argues that her confession showed true remorse. 
But my current thought is that the omission shows that even in her confession, her main concern was protecting herself rather than respecting me as a spouse by giving me the agency to make a fully informed choice, not that different from never telling me in the first place. I am now strongly considering divorce again and relying on the prenup for a more favorable divorce settlement. She wants us to go back to the couple's therapy but how would that even work now that I trust her even less than I did two years ago? This situation really shows how vital honesty is to the foundation of trust in a relationship. Forgiveness can be a huge gift, but it's also something that relies on both partners being 100% upfront. By holding back details, OP's wife tried to control the narrative and kept him from making an informed choice, which honestly defeats the point of her confession in the first place. OP is completely justified in feeling betrayed all over again because trust wasn't just broken once but twice. That postnup now isn't just a formality, it's a lifeline to protect him from any more dishonesty. Thanks for being here. Make sure to like, subscribe, and come back for more stories like these.